Government initiatives, policies, and partnerships act as catalysts in nation-building by strengthening technical education and skill development. These efforts produce a technically proficient workforce, driving economic growth, innovation, and sustainable development across the nation. To understand how has India fared so far, we are joined by an elite panel to discuss just that. Namaskar. In today's fast-evolving global economy, technical education has played a crucial role in empowering nation's workforce and driving innovation, startup, and entrepreneurial activities in our country. Friends, now we will discuss about how the government initiatives has played a role in making our nation a technological superpower and also providing a huge manpower for the whole world, not just for India. So in this direction, I would be asking each one of your institution's contribution as well as you know your uh, thought process on the policies of the initiatives of the government and how it has helped your institute and also the nation. Maybe again, I will start with uh, you, Professor, uh, kindly. To, to enhance the research, academic research and innovation ecosystem of uh, our university, uh, the funding support from both the central government and state government as well as from various funding agencies like University Grants Commission, All India Council for Technical Education and Department of Science and Technology, they have played a, a pivotal role. For, for, for example, uh, the various schemes under DST, DST FIST, DST PERS, uh, and uh, we have uh, AICT, RPS, RPS scheme, research promotion scheme, and then MODROP scheme of uh, AICT, as well as uh, UGC, there are many schemes like uh, the UGC Special Assistance Program, Departmental Research Support, uh, and U UGC uh, MRP, Major Research College Scheme. All these schemes you know, have helped our university, uh, various departments, to augment their research facility. So we were able to establish state-of-the-art facility. You know, all the de departments uh, had applied for uh, funding and they got benefited. And as a result, we were able to enhance the research uh, facilities. And we were, as a result, we were able to publish all our research findings in peer-reviewed international journals. And we were able to file patents. And some of the uh, ideas were converted into products. Technology transfers have uh, taken place. So in a big way, uh, various schemes uh, of uh, both government, both central government uh, and uh, the agents, other agencies like UGCs have helped. Thank you, Professor. And Professor Panta, so, uh, continuing the question, you know, how and what do you see how these policies, government policies have helped the IIT systems, particularly because now they are part of the, one of the leading IITs yeah. of the nation. Yeah. Thank you for this very important question because uh, Fundraising is very, very important, right, uh, for development of R&D activities in the institute, right. And uh, I thank, right, because several, uh, right, uh, schemes uh, have come now, right, uh, for promoting the science and engineering, right, research in the country. But at the same time, I would also like to stress that, right, uh, we should be self-reliant now because the era is changing gradually, right. Uh, uh, we should find out a way, right, for attracting more and more industries, right, uh, so that the fund can be generated. So, fortunately, at IIT Roorkee now, we have a lot of industrial collaborative research also, besides the government funding. So, like, we have a lot of, right, uh, now, because the UGC, DST, also, they have the schemes where the industrial supported projects are being, right, sponsored. So, there may be a kind of, right, 25, 75. And gradually this number can be right increased. So, so I think uh, now another important thing is that we have to develop that kind of entrepreneurship skills, right? Uh, so startups are coming up. So we have more than 170 startups in our campus, and uh, we have connected ourselves with many industries. So they are ready to give the funds out now uh, under different schemes, and uh, now. CSR funds are also available for development of the infrastructure facilities and uh, alumni connection will also be equally important because the donations from alumni, right, whether it is in terms of the financial or in terms of right, their 
on uh, knowledge skill right uh, both are very very important and they are right uh, most of the alumni they already have the well established right uh, their industries and they can be ready so now the i think for research if the thoughts are there if ideas are there then generation of fund is not a problem but we need to look at a kind of transformational research which is now very important that how the right uh, our phd students master student and even undergrad project should be of industrial relevant project so that right they should go to the industry bring the problem and then develop the kind of right confidence right uh, that's very very important so technology some trl level 3 tell them that this is already proof of concept is there this can be taken to the next level and then right it can become a business model so i think we have to make that kind of right uh, collaborations with the industry and then bring the right the partners from the government agency to so there are lot of law anr office there right principal center advisor so the manthan schemes are there then a lot of these mnr edbt these funds are already there and with the industrial support they are ag and i would also like to mention that we are doing lot of in this international collaboration so because that is also need of the hour mm -hmm. that uh, when you talk about the experts from the abroad also and then bilateral and multilateral collaborations right iuss tf is there indo german science technology forums are there indo french so indo australia aisr and also government has started the scheme like web hour right bajra yes. so these are the bring the talents right from abroad so that they can spend the time and then share the right exchange of knowledge and technology so that the technology can be developed and that can be established within the country so i think these are the initiative which we have taken at our institute. thank you thank you professor bhrud you know you had a vision of growing double the number of students double the number of research scholars because you you are the young university now among among all of us okay so what are the government initiative now how that is going to help your institutions and also the ecosystem in our uh, thank you sir um uh, before uh, you know uh, as i said uh, you know after aict started in 1887 uh, sorry 1987 um the college of engineering pune was fortunate to get lot of uh, you know the funding from aict wait uh, initially more drop for modernization of the laboratories or research funding uh, like uh, uh, tactic or tech cube tech cube funding one two three and r and d funding so tech cube one two three has as i said really helped uh, the institutions to grow you know from a typical you know a government institution to autonomous institution showcasing best practices and that has Uh, created a model um, for the institutions to follow. Uh, I take a pride in telling that you know the institutions in the state actually follow what COEP does. Let it be a curriculum, a lab establishment, or even you know the activities what we conduct. The other institutions, government and private, they, they try to you know replicate our uh, model. Uh, especially in tech cube one two three, um, you know, uh, we have established number of center of excellences. Probably we are the only institution those have been given a two center of excellences through tech cube. Other institutions gave were given only one center of excellence per institute. And through that, uh, you know, we could develop a lot of, uh, you know, the the state of art laboratories. laboratories. Uh, which help our students to perform uh, better uh, learn better on a recent equipments and also use their enhance their knowledge so that the that 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 eventually help in improve employability uh, as i said uh, this nep uh, we were the you know the state uh, in which uh, technical education mm -hmm. we did a first you know step to implement national uh, the national education policy in technical education as such the government of maharashtra uh, issued a gr where our faculty members from cuep they contributed a lot in designing the uh, structure before aict and ugc could come out for technical institutions and uh, in that uh, typically you know we have made a social internship compulsory after first year 
So we have internship compulsory after every year and made a pathway for the exit. So we have made a pathway that student, every student, those who wants to exit from the first year, second year, third year, they will get certificate, diploma and then the vocational degree after completing certain skill oriented program and the curriculum for this, for each department, for each course is already in place. So that, 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 that has really helped us in, in showcasing how this NEP will help students to take a, take a break from their, you know, regular curriculum, though nobody has, you know, opted for that, yes, yes. but the, but the other universities and the institution, they are, you know, um, they are replicating, replicating our model into their uh, curricula. So this is how the NEP 2020 is, uh, you know, uh, really, you know, helping our students building their skill set. Uh, every every semester we have made a internship compulsory, uh, six months compulsory internship um, for the uh, every students in their eighth semester. And that's how we are, we are, we are, we hope that, you know, the students' employability and their skill set will improve and they will get a skills which are required by the industry at the time of their employment. Thank you, Professor Barut. I think you made a very important point on the internship. You know, AICTE has also made a mandatory internship, a semester long mandatory yes. internship to all the engineering institutions. I think this has really changed the way students, you know, get a hands on experience. So now I'll come to Professor Murthy. You know, your VE you, College is one of the institutions you know which has changed from state government to, to national institute. Today it is a centrally funded technical institution, uh, almost equal into NITs. How this problem of financial support and funding was a challenge for you, and what do you see in the future? Yeah, I think uh, as you said rightly, initially it was under the state, uh, pure state government, then subsequently to state aided government, state aided college, then uh, it went into UGC mode, uh, university mode, UGC funded. And uh, as I uh, see, and then subsequently it was now taken over by the central government from the Ministry of Education. Now at this point of time, when it was converted from uh, state uh, uh, government, uh, under university to uh, state university to central government, there was certainly a financial you know, requirement or crunch was there because these were all pretty old buildings, you know, so 100 plus years old buildings, you know, and the infrastructure was one of the major challenges. So, uh, incidentally, when it was uh, uh, taken over as IEST, there was an initial grant given which helped us, uh, uh, you know, to build up. But still, you know, the kind of uh, requirement uh, was, there, was there was phenomenal. So this was being met with uh, basically uh, mostly from for research. If you look at, I start from economics. Eh? Basically, we need some good uh, technical manpower who can do re research. Actually, how do we create them? So the PMRF scheme, you know, that was introduced was one you know good initiation to identify some you know potential researchers who could be put into research mode. Apart from that, uh, the dual degree programs also, mm -hmm. which fed, which actually helped to you know uh, train them towards PhD. So that was also giving a good amount of you know research manpower, and once we have that uh, minimum funding, as uh, my uh, professors have said, other professors have said that the funding came through AACT uh, guided uh, schemes as well as UGC guided schemes. In, in fact, the QIP program. If you look at the, from the student front, PMRF helped. From the uh, the faculty front also, many colleges was requiring you know some kind of uh, hand holding and all. So the QIP program was also another yes. one that helped you know in one part of the time. And after that QAP program, then subsequently, now uh, once the uh, take it, you know, took over, like one, two, three phases and all, it really helped in carving out some new specialized master's programs for which special funding was given. I remember in IIT ISM when I was there, we did two programs. One was in underground tunneling and underground space technology, wherein some advanced laboratories were required for uh, cavity mapping and all those things. So the, we created that infrastructure through take it only. And similarly, geomatics is another area where we could, uh, you know, unleash another uh, PG program. So these two, apart from regular conventional programs that we offer from, uh, say, mining engineering or something like that. So uh, IEST Shipur also now looking forward to, you know, introducing some uh, novel programs, as I mentioned already, in VLSI technology as well as green energy. Uh, and these are some of the areas where we would be looking into. And uh, with regards to uh, the industry funding, as uh, Professor Panth has said, 
now we are joining hands particularly with ministry is coming forward to support heavily uh, for jointly for sponsored project like bml for example we were trying to design a motor for you know for drag line one of the major machines in uh, mining for example so with which you know bml and iit ism and one more institution together we were trying to build up uh, so for some cent central mechanical engineering research university and all laboratory and all and uh, this were you know helping for 75 25 as he mentioned rightly so the funding was coming from ministry and uh, another point he mentioned uh, professor pand was you know indi like indigenous resources basically so we need to approach industry to solve their you know uh, research oriented problems we need to identify now coal india for example i talk about mining as an example because being a mining engineer i was more into yeah. it so we found you know coal india coming forward and funding us to the tune of about you know 14 crores recently what one project i am talking about where we brought you know advanced pedagogy like virtual reality augmented reality to bring back you know a, a mining experience into a theater so that the teaching becomes much more easy and uh, absorbing and uh, the complex things we can teach you know which we otherwise we cannot see in fact for example this can be transported or teleported to even bridge engineering or any kind of slope stability related issues and all, where drone technology and all those can be brought in and shown in a vr environment and uh, even controls also we could add there so the advanced technology aiding the teaching is a part of it and then leading to research and finally you know converting into a problem where uh, the industry scale grading also we can do and scale up we can do thank you i think you know, all of us have actually so, agreed i would like to share yeah, yeah, yeah please, please several national facilities uh, we have established at uh, anna university through various uh, funding support for example government of tamil nadu supported institute of remote sensing and then ugc supported crystal growth center ugc supported educational multimedia research center and dst supported national hub for healthcare instrumentation development and private public partnership and au nlc navelly leading corporation india limited hub for energy environment and sustainability this is uh, for which no we received 5 crore funding support and then uh, the national center for sustainable coastal management supported by ministry of environment forest and climate change and very recently with the government of tamil nadu we have established an unmanned aerial corporation with anna university as a academic partner in the in, in the area of drones technology very nice to know and also i what i wanted to summarize is basically all all of you have actually uh, agreed and accepted that yeah, ministry yeah. of education has put in a lot of efforts yes, yes. today to bring the technical and professional education to this order in the country okay a lot of funding whether it is starting from tech up one tech up two tech up three even in aict large number of schemes on the gyan training the gyan scheme and global then, initiative yeah, academic yeah, efforts the gyan scheme and also spark, spark program. program many many such programs have helped us to come to this stage and also if you look at the some of the you know the schemes of the government of india for example digital india and then start up india stand up india swachh bharat all these also make in a way make, make in india that is very important yes, all these have actually triggered a lot of activities but with this kind of a background of the available funding the changes in the scenario of from a conventional core engineering programs to very emerging areas india has developed as a force to reckon with in this technological education but coming back to the question is how well our students are skilled what are the what are your views on skilling emphasis on skilling in our technical education maybe again we'll start with you professor uh, as as sir uh, as, as you already mentioned what is important is uh, uh, we have to impart both technical skill as well as soft skill and for that the accreditation played a, a, a pivotal role for example every college they have adopted this ob this outcome based uh, education, uh, education. Uh, and uh, and what we have followed is uh, this model called the 5d standard the first d stands for defining outcomes you have to define outcome and then then only we have to design our uh, uh, curriculum followed by delivery of uh, instruction the third d is delivery of uh, in instruction and the pedagogy. fourth uh, the fourth yeah the pedagogy and the fourth one is we have to document the results and then the fifth one is we have to uh, uh, the, the, that is we are improvement we have to determine improvement so this all these five d's no almost every institutions they have followed after having defined outcomes only we have to design curriculum 
uh, for example we are first we have to define the program outcome and then only we have to define uh, design our curriculum and then and then the organization of courses course content after having defined course outcomes only we have to define uh, the con course content and as you rightly said the delivery of instructions now in the curriculum design itself you now we have introduced various courses skill development courses industry oriented courses value added courses several courses have been added and i would like to mention about this uh, uh, an important uh, uh, scheme a massive upskilling uh, platform which was uh, 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 like evolved by by the government of tamil nadu which is non madalvan scheme yes. uh, it's a, it's a, it's a very important scheme no where no we were able to uh, tie up in in association with industry partners with tamil nadu skill development corporation uh, in association with industry industry partners we have made one skill skill development course as a compulsory course in in all semesters so with the help of industry partners we have identified the skill gap uh, after a, a detailed brainstorming session we have identified skill gap and then skill development courses have been identified we have uh, in in uh, in discussion with the industry partners we have framed the curriculum and we have identified industry partners two industry partners we have we are offering skill development courses which will enhance the um, the industry academia gap uh, so yeah, yeah, so thank you so this is a non mudalvan scheme uh, it's a very very HHI, important, important, one. important yeah, scheme by government of tamil nadu that's why i think tamil nadu today With higher education, more than fifty percent graduation ratio, yes, doing exceedingly well. Yes, so so coming back to coming back to this accreditation, what you raised. So National Board of Accreditation actually was formed after the Washington Accord, which AICT actually signed in two thousand fourteen. Okay, at that time, you know, we created the National Board of Accreditation here, and today it is accrediting the programs of the engineering programs actually. and uh, it has been now expanded to you know, management and other areas as well and that is actually a landmark actually decision because that's where the outcome based education was been emphasized on particularly all the engineering colleges even the we, we started doing a lot of activity in that and in ba along with yeah. uh, this is the program accreditation and, and that is institute level accreditation institute accreditation, accreditation institute level was also started by ugc actually and uh, today we have nac office in bangalore and mba in delhi and uh, considering all these you know iits were little bit out of this accreditation mm -hmm. so how do you professor pank how do you say you know how did you manage in the institutions about the quality initiatives and where do you i mean uh, now are we are you ready to come into the accreditation of the national accreditation where on all on all every institution should be accredited i think this is also very pertinent uh, point of discussion right uh, when uh, actually iits were considered as institute of national importance and that time it was realized that there is no need to accredit right uh, having said that right because all institutes are doing exceptionally well right and uh, i don't think that uh, a kind of monitoring is required because uh, output right when you talk about their qs ranking when you talk about their nir ranking already these frameworks are already come where the points are already coming right through different levels but uh, when i talk about a kind of mentorship right when you talk about how we can have the exchange of knowledge right or some kind of right a guidance when there is a, these visits are made i think that is required right uh, and uh, uh, coming to this education policy right uh, because already so many right new things have come uh, where you can monitor the right uh, overall academic progress and uh, placement and all these things are very very important nowadays so skill development has become very very important right uh, and uh, this can happen when we have the schemes like you have know, already introduced that kind of minor programs right yes. uh, so you have degree in one but you should look at the other branch also because that's what the multidisciplinary interdisciplinary so what uh, we have started like tinkering lab right uh, and uh, that is atal tinkering lab which has been right again initiated very good initiation and uh, at the same time a kind of student activity center right uh, where you just give them that kind of freedom to work right uh, use their own hands work as a team so we just in the first year on uh, right we give them that kind of where the students should be of different branches they should join hand make a team of four and then develop a product right it is their own thinking with under the guidance of some mentor and they develop the product and uh, then we have a kind of right uh, 
uh, where we called uh, overall industrial day and uh, many we invite from outside also and this is a competitive event and we give the award. So and then we select the right out of that 50 projects and then we ask them to work further yes, because where yes. we feel that industries also show interest and where we feel that there is a right scope they can move forward and we we provide them the funds also for that up to 50 lakh right and support also from some right startups yes. so this starts a kind of connections right yes. and uh, already the capacity building program the ministry has started for faculty also so that and uh, we are starting several programs for our iti for our industry uh, msme so that that kind of right the the gap between industry and academy is being narrowed down right they are coming and they are interacting with our student and our students are going to them so this is where they are not trying to identify where whatever the area now how ai right is connected to the health care how robots right which are being right developed within the campus how drones are being right and uh, we are uh, right we have mou with uh, defense we have mou with army we have mou with aims uh, rishikesh and aims uh, new delhi so this is where we are looking forward that how this science and technology can be connected with the product development yeah. and we are working with them for this kind of transformational technology development and students are doing and that is also enhancing their skill yes. like uh, for the practical application so their knowledge but they are gaining in terms of the transformation then ar vr we have very good ar vr facility available where we are looking these kind of right trainings for the say, the floods when it comes right how it can be visualized the surgery right uh, through that right uh, so the uh, the sensor development all these things so how yeah. devices can be made so quantum physics right application of that semiconducting material so the new tools which are that should be learned by all branches of science at least there should be so this kind of right the, this is now where the i think skill yeah, development yeah, program is very very important yeah yeah you emphasize the on hands on experience yeah, that's right. and students doing themselves you know, all of you, I think, might be knowing AICT also created Idea Labs. Yeah, yeah. The AICT Idea Labs, there are now 113 Idea Labs across the country. And we have this year again announced another 150. So now I will, my question to Professor Virud is, you know, you have an Idea Lab, I think, you know, in, in your region also. Yes. Have you been to some of them and how does that play a role in upskilling or reskilling and also experiential learning part to the institute. In a big, the accreditation in a big way has promoted experiential learning, sir. Learn yes. Yes. Learn in a big way. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll begin with uh, this NEP. In, in NEP, this internship, as I said, it, it has become an integral part of the curriculum. Yes. You know, and in every semester, the courses are designed so designed that uh, some part of the course is based on the skilling. And what we have adopted in our university is a co-teaching. We have we have collected a huge database of our alumni, those who are ready to spend their few hours. And what we are working is along with the regular teacher, those alumni, they mostly majority of them they are they are in US now, and they will be you know conducting classes online for the students giving what is happening in industry. I believe that that is where, you know, even the institutions as a, as a teacher, we sometimes fail in telling them what is actually happening in industry. Um, and that, that is one step we have taken. Uh, and that has been already started. As I said, uh, the, the, the idea labs and all that, we have around 50 clubs on our campus. Okay. And we are the institution, we, we are the first to Send a micro satellite when Professor Sarbuddha was the director of the institution. Later on, IIT Bombay and few other institutions they have also you know sent micro satellites. Our students they work day and night in those clubs. You know they take part in all those competitions. Let it be a Robocom or um, the, uh, the 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 other competitions where motor car race or uh, other races are done. So they prepare the models in house. In fact, those are designed and and constructed, built. This time, our students they have designed a car which uses only only the battery and a motor which is not available in India. Other than that, 
entire design and entire structure is 3D printed also. It's 3D printed also in the yeah, same. So 3D printed in our own laboratory, <laughs> Very nice. in our own workshop. And and you know recently, Professor Gad, uh, the Honorable Minister Gadkari ji, he was there, <coughs> and then that that car was showed to, shown to him. He asked only one question: How many components are there? from Very imported diverse. so it was you know he was very much emphasizing on mm-hmm. make in india make so, in india exactly so exactly. The, uh, these are the only two components specifically because you know the weight of a car and the reliability of components still you know has to be you know match so having said that this this laboratory tinkling lab and your idea lab has helped the students in creating the the uh, the models creating the Uh, uh creating the uh, working actual working models and participating in various competitions both at international and national level no thank you i think you know these is a hands on experience and these uh, new labs which have been provided to the students have created a lot of buzz among them and they are now participating in all the international competitions as well as even aict funds them and similarly our smart india hackathon has become a largest open innovation hackathon yes. in the world yes. and with all these you know a lot of uh, new ideas are coming but i would like to ask professor murthy on how was our teachers training is happening because in the act we have what is called as atal act teaching and learning academy we are now training large number of teachers and upgrading their skills because that's very important see one is the students are now any smart They have yeah. actually yeah. they have uh, are born with the technology, yeah. Yeah. you know, in their hands. Yeah. When compared to the older generation, yeah. so what is the challenge? See, in ACT we have trained through Atal large number of teachers, and uh, we have also created a new program QIP. other than the QIP yeah. PG, yeah. you know, yes. certification program, the short term, yeah. so that they can also get experience in. PG certification program in other areas, interdisciplinary. interdisciplinary, so that they can start teaching in other areas. Yes. Because today there is a demand for teachers in the emerging areas. Because we are not finding good teachers in emerging areas, like whether it is data science, artificial intelligence, or robotics, cyber security, blockchain, uh, and all these areas. The shortage of teachers are imminent, and also even if you find them, they are not very experienced to teach with the uh, you know the pedagogy what. we need to emphasize so what is your opinion professor murthy sir and what efforts <coughs> your institution is doing in this direction of teachers training sir uh, i'll just uh, uh, go to this question little uh, later uh, first i would like to say the impact of nba is because that is the first question you asked actually mm-hmm. the nba has actually gave a kind of framework that against which you know everyone can be you know brought in one particular uh, kind of you know format and we can examine individual strengths and weaknesses and connect with the, the employer's requirement and then co- prepare our students or courses in such a way that you know yeah that is mobility of engineering mobility so it was well, well crafted and even though uh, the iit system has its own you know kind of academic audits being done by experts exactly. which we basically call it as like uh, it's almost equivalent to nba mm-hmm. but then the nba framework that was shared and it was done earlier part of you know many of the institutes have done that so that has helped you know in structuring the things not only courses labs also and the state of artness also all those things have been done including the uh, perception including the uh, course perception outcomes also i, I still remember you yeah. know last iit council i think uh, professor pant yeah. also was there we have decided even iits will come on you know this uh, institute accreditation, accreditation. 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 not a program accreditation but institute level like nac type of accreditation yeah. oh, which right. may be now coming as a rolled out as a binary accreditation binary. now accredited or not accredited yeah, yeah. yeah please so coming to the question that you made sir uh, regarding faculty first thing is like uh, as you said when they join fresh we need to nurture their you know uh, innate uh, what you call research uh, what you call kind of uh, uh, skills so for that seed grant is one thing that we are normally giving from institutional side some basic amount you know when they join maybe uh, to the tune of say 10 lakhs or something like that so that they can continue with their research that unfinished research or part finished research so that they uh, start converting into a product or you know they get little bit of time before they approach formally to the funding agency so this is the first thing seed grant which is again mostly it's internally generated resource basically from that only research support charges we are trying to give apart from that um, uh, we are also providing like mobility faculty mobility is also being encouraged now 
So we want to send faculty across using that uh, CPDA grant. We try to encourage them to use that CPDA grant for this, you know, faculty mobility. That also gets them, you know, a global look also. Apart from other IITs, other IITs which are doing pretty good in some of the areas, you know, some IITs are, you know, very good in some of the areas. So the kind of, you know, mutual uh, learning actually helps actually. The mobility also helps. Apart from that, the, the scheme of uh, sharing resources also has helped also uh, people to take uh, uh, optimally utilize the resources like iSTEM has come up yes. wherein you know, entire equipments were you know, onboarded board, there and the service is being used. That's another scheme you know that has come up. Even repetition has reduced. So, for example, in IIT, Dhanbad is close to like BE college, for example, like IST Shipur. So, I can take, you know, uh, the help of that. So, similar kind of, you know, so the, the faculty may basically along with their researchers, they require these supports actually. Then only they will be able to really prosper and get for higher funding. So, apart from this, uh, I think uh, sending them across, you know, various uh, training programs like CBDA, as you said, where the faculty is a mentor and students are, uh, mentors are there, industry mentors are there, faculty groups are there and student groups are there. A good chain has com come up now under CBDA and that is also helping to, you know, grow in the industrial application side where uh, the faculty are also more oriented towards industry oriented research. So, that's how basically I think uh, they get trained uh, and then it's individual innate quality also because some teachers are good in pure academics, some are very good in very good uh, fundamental research, some are good in applied research. So, probably we may have to recognize that uh, aspect also and try to encourage them towards that. Thank you. Also, I should add uh, there is a Malvi teachers training program which yes. is yes. Now yes. Sorry. Yeah, faculty that's development program. The so these are the very good initiatives I think which have been made. So accreditation, faculty, we accreditation have. teachers training yeah. are all influence the teaching, yes. Yes, sure. research and overall education in my environment of institution. I think all of us will agree Sir, on that and, and NAC and NBA, they insist on continuous improvement. That's a, that's that a very best to yes, yes. improve our uh, facility. Continuously, no? they so need continuously to we were able to upgrade our process. facility. Yes, yes, yes. And as a result, the academic research and innovation ecosystem uh, within the institution has become more conducive for both uh, faculty members and students to carry out uh, uh, research in all niche areas yeah, yeah, and it, it helped to impart high quality education. Yeah, definitely. So, I think all of us so have the agreed. continuous improvement played a uh, pivotal role. Continuous, continuous on accreditation on. and both institutional accreditation and program and accreditation exactly. of MBA for engineering yeah. institutions have played a major role. I think all of us will have. Yes. And skilling, I think some of you very clearly said now uh, very important to impart okay. skilling and it is already being done in our institutions. So, the the last and final, you know, thought process I would like to ask you on employability. So, before that, before I come to that, I would like to tell you that we have tied up with all edutech companies at AACTE called NEET program, National Education Alliance for Technology. We have large number of edutech companies who can offer the courses and also so Swayam so I become now Swayam so plus for the all the uh, companies, international as well as national companies to offer skill based course program, certified courses to our engineering graduates where they can be trained while they are in the college. You know, they get certified so that they go to a, a, a job. They are ready to work. I think that kind of skilling clearly demonstrated India is a leader in supplying technical manpower. Today, we can definitely see across the world. All our engineers are working everywhere. You know, they are omnipresent actually. Indian engineering graduates are omnipresent, whether it is IITNs or AICT approved institutions, whether in our own institutions like ISRO, DRDO, BARC, all are working and they've really contributed to the growth of the nation. So, coming back to the question on employability, recently AICTE started AICT career portal as well as a placement portal for students across our institution to help them, which is again a big success because a large number of companies have come forward to offer jobs. So coming, looking at that, and but you're also hearing a lopsided story on, oh, employability, there are no jobs. So how do you see your institutions have successfully able to place your students? And what is the placement scenario at your respective institutions and also neighboring institutions? in your uh, state as well as um, in, uh, are attached to the institutions like Anna University. In, in Anna University, we have a center called Center for University Industry Collaboration. And through through that, that center, what we promote is uh, we promote internship, 
uh, and of course it, it also facilitates on campus placement uh, for not only for the the four uh, four university departments uh, throughout tamil nadu for all engineering colleges also uh, that are affiliated to anna university we support and if you see uh, the on campus placement as far as anna university is concerned the four campuses is concerned the placement is about 80% to 80% fantastic mm. uh, anything i say above 70% is fantastic because some of them go for post graduation some of them even uh, you know doesn't tell you where they have gone <laughs> yeah so in a, in a, so our students know they are getting placed how about, how about in your affiliated colleges and, and in affiliated co colleges i would say the placement in in the emerging domains like for example computer science ec it related domains if you see uh, the the placement score will be around 50% okay uh, and uh, in other domains I would say it will be around 30 30 30 30 to 35 professor pan yeah this is very very challenging and uh, right because now placement uh, i think uh, it is uh, the demand and supply right and uh, what is the interest of the students and where they are getting the job so these two are right very very challenging because the student mindset has gone towards joining the it companies right a kind of right uh, microsoft google these kind of companies where right? they feel the package is high and these are right white right, uh, the collar job right and all this so this is a big challenge that our students they uh, are more interested to go to the software jobs like right, consultancy job mm -hmm. marketing instead of going to hardcore industry so now what we are looking forward right this is where the industry also they have the similar complaint because the student they join there and leave it right but as far as the placement our training and placement shall data or all this it is always above 85 90% so placement wise there is no problem now now what is the interest of the student because whether they are applying for these right when the hardcore industry come do come or not, right they do come but the student they join for one year they leave so that complaints we are getting right from our uh, yes. right the the company when they do come most of the our student they also uh, right prefer to go for management right so the, they apply and they go there for mba or higher or PG diploma yeah, or the no number program. percentage going abroad is now decreasing that's uh, right uh, because in india also there are plenty of opportunities they and we encourage them to go for their own startup now to look at your own entrepreneurship plan and develop the industry right and they are doing that also so we want them that they should give the jobs to many instead of seeking job so that uh, percentage is now increasing as a team they are having their own right uh, this kind of right to uh, what to call the startups or company like zomato or all these things right they are going in those ways also when we talk about and, uh, i am very happy to hear yeah. from both of you that uh, the employability is re reasonably looking good yeah. Yeah. i mean in fact least, uh, engineering and professional courses yeah. in fact there is there are a lot of opportunity in it product domain compared so, to it services domain so earlier some five years back no there are a lot of opportunity in it service domain but now no uh, the, the it has shifted to it product and the ctc uh, also has increased so the average ctc no cost to company earlier was 5 lakh now it is 8 lakh as far as anna university is concerned well, that's very good to hear let's let's hear from you know very industrial town pune okay how yes. how do you see professor dilip that how is your students are being placed and also i i mean, am also looking at a lot of new startups are coming pune is also again one uh -huh. of the very uh, uh, flamboyant uh, you know in creating new innovative startups so what is your observation yeah uh, so for us placement is consider uh, um, sure uh, electronics computer science it and to certain extent uh, those circuit branches uh, their their placement is almost 100% in my you see uh, in they have more than one in, in, in fact office. in in anna university also same scenario sir yeah. <laughs> computer science information <laughs> technology it is 100% mostly you know civil <laughs> and the uh, civil and planning the mechanical it is it is uh, above 60 70% around but civil and planning uh it particularly in my university is um, is around 50% and so average is 80 85% civil and planning basically majority of those students uh you know they 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 prepare for civil ser services in the civil department uh, planning and civil business and that's how 
and the scenario around in the nearby colleges is uh, more or less same for core engineering courses the placement is really a concern but circuit branches the placement is uh, good and those left out as sir said you know majority of them now you know the students are very choosy one thing is they want package yeah. okay that is one <laughs> and then uh, if the package is not through the the placement uh, office then they go for uh, external off campus, you know, off off campus, campus. Uh, placement yes, where yes. the 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 startups are are giving them a very good salary yes. even as it's compared to the established yes. uh, companies the startups good, are giving them good and many many students they want now they 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 want to start their own startups so they are not registering for the uh, placement activities and that really adds into this this number which is left out that non placed this is a very positive yes, yes, thing yes, i think uh, all of us have agreed that you know the jobs are available placements are there yes. the jobs are there for a talented skilled engineering or a management graduate there are enough jobs there are of no, uh, i think this is a good positive news so but one more thing you know as we i just give you statistics because today we have upar id and national credit framework a lot of it has brought a lot of flexibility to the academic curriculum you know and today we have registered 30.5 crore children on the upar id okay and which will actually you know now digital delivery of degree certificates you know to their uh, mailbox and then transparency about degrees and all that is happening at the same time i would like to also pose a question today india is having one of the largest higher education ecosystem with 4.3 crore children in higher education if you look at the number 80% of them are undergraduate either three year degree or four year degree so how is the post graduate education is shaping I would like to pose this question to Professor Murthy. See how what do you see PG programs at uh, you know BE college or so called IIEST today? Okay, and uh, what is your vision? Anything can be done in this direction? Yes, sir. This uh, particular uh, institute was initially called for PG education only. Exactly. That's why I asked the question. Five-year program, the PG okay. education. Uh, mm -hmm. But what happened was uh, initially dual degree programs attracted attention. but subsequently the pay packages being you know more or less similar with the four year program slowly the dual degree programs you know receded in their uh, approach actually the students taking this dual degree were also that reducing. is one reason maybe another reason is you are also admitting directly to phd yes today ah that is also okay. there direct with certain you know gpa we are trying to admit them so uh, with regards to uh, pg yes if you look at uh, as those people who are really interested to do research probably they would be really doing it and then they will be making their headway without any problem but there are people who join as a stop gap so many times what happens is they are uh, most of the people who particularly wanted a government job now they are through gate examination for example you might have seen this so they come here for masters and enrolled in you know another gate so initially they get cleared you know gate that's fine but then normally they are using this mtech uh, you know to clear the gate so that they get have enough time and education also so they are getting highly educated by a good institute they join a good institute initially if they are not in a good institute they join a higher in, uh, higher end institute so we have people joining uh, for masters primarily for their job and a few of them only really interested to go for higher uh, research higher end research so that is one reason why people are de departing in between that and is I, it's, it's always true yeah. see employability is the key key to for uh, higher education yeah. see employability many of them come for not for just the passion of research and very there are there are some students who really do want to do something they will create their own companies they become today unicorns and there are many uh, you know unicorns are going to making also today in india so i think you know i so really the discussion to yeah, to please say, is uh, this pg programs are very essential particularly when we are looking at you know high end research we need to nurture them and we need to have some kind of incentives for this pg programs also in terms of one thing is like the regular uh, uh, gate scholar uh, gate uh, scholarship kind of you know people are going down but non gate are also interested for example yeah, those point you made yeah. because aicte distributes yeah. the postgraduate scholarship across the nation except yeah. iit yes. like this yes. yes 
So I I think you know so we can consider can, yeah. maybe can we give some kind yeah. of like fifty percent of the fellowship? Ah uh, yeah, 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 there's a good to suggestion. To I think you allow me, I'll just add one. Yeah, kindly, please, please. Because you know when when PG uh, programs are uh, considered, we have twenty nine PG courses. All civil engineering M Tech programs are full. Yes, similar is the case in our case also. Whereas you know computer science and in the 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 the, the, the programs where the undergraduate Uh, employment is very good. The postgraduate programs are not fit. Mm-hmm. So the, the reason being, as he said, there are two ways. The the students they want to join in civil engineering and other engineering a PG program for uh, you know taking up their another examinations or preparing for another examinations. Um, and there are no, I mean there are job scarcity or they are not uh, liking those jobs maybe because of packages or so. And that's how we need to find out some solution for attracting. Yeah, yeah. I think. Uh, thank you. Sir, thank you very much. The government of Tamil Nadu is also offering uh, assistance for pursuing a PG program, sir. Uh, so six thousand per month. No, they are they are offering as a scholarship to PG for students. For non gate students. Uh, for non gate students. Oh, very good. So anyway, so good for, to know. For 300 students, I think there are some challenges. As you rightly inquiry. said, in postgraduate education yes. in engineering and management, I think we will. Uh, deliberate that and see what AICT also can come up with plans. I think anyway. I think we we are almost at the end of the pro- uh, recording. So I would like to once again thank all of you for giving your very insightful thoughts and also the view about the technical and management education in the nation. So thank you very much. Thank you for all you. for all Thank of you for coming. Namaskar. 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 Namask